greatest tree is the metaphor for Kishore Chandra Dev. He is the tree we are talking about, who offers shade for the needy, who fights for the betterment of the tribals, and who has risen and grown for the sake of tribal well-being. Once the seed that was sown long back, he is the tree now, whose ripe fruits are ready. Fifteen Sri Kishor Chandra Dev. With your permission, sir. As far as housing is concerned, sixty lakh houses under the Indira Avas Yojana scheme have been allotted, and only during 2008 and 2009, 2.39 lakh houses, dwelling units, have been allot allotted to minorities. Only during the year 2008 and 2009, sir, so the, the amount of money for each of these dwelling units was also increased during the last uh, uh, budget and banks have also been instructed to give loans in addition for uh, completion of these dwelling units. The Kurupam dynasty had once been losing its kings at a tender age consistently. Kishor Chandra Dev's father, late Raja Veerabhadra Dev, expired at the age of 32. His father, Vairicharla Surinarayana Dev also died at the age of 29. When Virabhadra Dev died accidentally, his son Kishore Chandra Dev was only 5 years. After the sad demise of Raja Virabhadra Dev, the Queen Shobalata Devi took her family to Madras. She raised her family there with high morals and good attitude. She always believed in simple and humble lifestyle. Her ambition was to fulfill the promises of her husband through their children. She wanted to serve the poor community dwelling in the hills. 1955, January 14th, we reached Madras because my husband wanted to educate all my children here, especially my son for Telugu. So he passed away and there was no chance for us to do anything. Her noble endeavor was blessed. Up to her expectation, the Raja in the making, Bhairicharla Kishore Chandra Dev rose to the occasion magnificently. Sir, so from the beginning, five o'clock, he used to get up and go play tennis with uh, other sister, come back and seven o'clock go to the college, Tambaram, all the way, and the first uh, go by uh, go up to this Mambalam, but it was too much, too crowded. So he used to go to Gindi, from Gindi to by train to um, Tambaram, from Tambaram walking from station to his college. And those days, you know, the Christian college, I used to. They say that children get spoiled if you give them money, this and all that. So I used to give him one rupee only. Finally, the moment arrived. Kishore Chandra Dev completed his education and grew up according to his mother's expectations. He did his BA in economics and PG in political science. When he got married in 1970, he returned to Kurupam to look after his subjects. First, he got actively involved in cultivation. He excelled in agriculture and thus received the best farmer award. He even ventured into dairy farming and other agro-based and agro-related fields. Agriculture was something which was totally new to me. I had to learn, understand, pick it up. And at the third year of my agriculture, I could produce the highest yield of paddy per acre in one of my one of the varieties in one of my plots, for which I was given uh, the first prize in the state of Andhra Pradesh. I enjoyed agriculture. I did it for about seven, eight years. And in fact, I became a seed supplier for the state government for some time. I got a lot of seeds from Rajendra Nagar University, from Katak Rice Research Center. And in small plots, uh, you see, first I would see which one suited our climate and this situation. And then I would develop those seeds and supply to the government. I did that for a few years. In fact, I was the one who uh, introduced high-yielding varieties of paddy in this area. The landmark event of 1973 throws more light on this great king. 
the Land Sealing Act had come into existence. Kishore Chandra Dev, with the consent of his mother, decided to distribute their royal assets for the sake of the poor and needy. It was a royal gesture towards the needy subjects, truly an act of generosity shown by a great king.